Mr. Judd here, and this is Genetics 3, all about replication. If you want to see an amazing animation about DNA replication, check out this link over here. Replication is copying DNA. But it's not exactly the same as taking a piece of paper and putting it into a copy machine and then getting a copy out. In that case, the original stays the same, and you get an exact replica of your original. In DNA replication, it's going to be a little bit different. And to figure out how it's different, we're going to have to look at the chemical details of how DNA is actually copied. The key words for today are replication, helicase, DNA polymerase, and you might notice they end in ACE, so those are going to be enzymes, and semi-conservative. Let's start where we started our last video. We're going to do a simple double helix. Remember, this represents one tiny segment of DNA. The rungs of the ladder are the bases. And this time we're going to replicate it or copy it. So uh, let's flatten it out again. And this actually does happen during DNA replication. It flattens out. And to get an idea of exactly how it is going to be copied, what I want to do is take it and draw it in a little greater detail, but not as great a detail as we did last time, just because it'll make it easier for me to draw. We don't care about the sugar phosphate backbone at this point. So there are my uprights, but instead of just drawing them as rungs, what I'm going to do is add in the bases or the letters. So let's start with a T. Put a C, G. These are just random. Let's put another T. Let's put an A. It's supposed to be an A. And then let's put a G. Okay, so our sequence is T, C, G, T, A, G going down. Now, hopefully at this point in your study of genetics, you can easily put in the complementary side. So T matches with A. All right, so there's our pretty simple diagram of a small strand of DNA. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six base pairs. Good. The first step in replication is to split this molecule in half. And that is done by an enzyme called helicase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use helicase. I'm going to have my uh, one strand stay over here, and I'm going to have the other strand separate and move over there. That's done by an enzyme called helicase that untwists and unzips DNA. So I will use my rectangle tool here. And of course, my drawing wasn't perfect, so my rectangle didn't hit it perfectly. But then I'm going to move it over. And that would be the job of helicase, to split the DNA in half down the middle. If you remember from last time, what I had to do in order to split DNA is actually break the hydrogen bonds. The next step is that we are ready to start replicating. Here's one original half. Here's the other original half. I'm going to change colors because this is going to be somewhat important. Let's change to a nice blue color. T should have been matched to A, but there's nothing here now. During replication, another enzyme comes in and deposits new nucleotides. And it's going to know that T matches with A. And, uh, that's just because of the chemical shape and bonding structure of TNA. They always go together. What I've added there is one nucleotide. But to continue, I'm going to have to add another nucleotide. So C should match with G. And so on down the line. I'm just going to finish up my sugar phosphate backbone. I'm going to put my partial rungs in and then quickly finish it up. You'll notice that the side I just drew in there is identical in sequence to the side I just separated over there. So the job of actually building in the new side is done by an enzyme called DNA polymerase. Okay, so that's the one that actually builds the DNA. I'm going to go over here instead of bringing in individual nucleotides just to make my drawing job easier. I'm going to add in uh, the whole backbone, and then I'm going to just draw in the bases. Then new hydrogen bonds would form between each of the base pairs. I forgot to put my hydrogen bonds over there. And we have two new DNA strands. This would happen down the entire length of DNA. This was just a small segment, so you get the basic idea. Now, 
I want to show you in a new color. Let's do, uh, we'll do like a dark purple. I want to show you that we have one old part and one new part. So we got old and new. And so this molecule is an exact copy of the original, but it is half old, half new. That idea of half old, half new is called semi-conservative. When DNA replicates, only half is actually new. The other old half is over here in the new copy. So the last thing I want to talk about is why replicate? Why would you even do this process? Well, hopefully you remember from our discussions of cell division that any time you need a new cell, it needs a complete copy of the DNA. So replication is going to be essential for, uh, for both types of cell division. The first type we talked about was mitosis. Mitosis makes mitose, and it is the simple form of cell division where exact copies of cells are made. It's used for growth and repair in multicellular organisms, and it's used for asexual reproduction in single-celled organisms and, and some multicelled organisms that can reproduce asexually. The other type is meiosis. And meiosis is used for making sperm and egg. And it's a special type of division where the, uh, the chromosomes are shuffled and then later on during fertilization recombined to make unique individuals. But know that both types of cell division, the type that makes body cells and asexual reproduction, and meiosis, the type that makes sperm and egg, require replication before they can proceed. To review, the key terms were replication, which means copying of DNA, helicase, which is the enzyme that splits apart DNA and prepares it for, for replication. DNA polymerase is the enzyme that actually builds new nucleotides onto the old template in order to make copies of DNA. Semi-conservative means that each new DNA molecule is actually half old and half new.